God bless you, everyone. This is Pastor Abby, and I just want to give everyone um, a welcome to Friday's Bible study. And I just, I want to, I want to not just welcome, but I want to thank you for tuning in, uh, whether you you attend in our church or or you're not, or you're no longer attending, or you've never been there. Um, we just uh, we just want to say thank you for tuning in and if you have any questions regarding tonight's Bible study just feel free to put your um, question in the comment box whether it's in YouTube or in Facebook so I'm gonna try to move forward because I don't want to make tonight's Bible study very long and this is the continuance of last uh, Friday so Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we want to, um, again, welcome everyone. This is going to be all in English. And this is Freedom in Truth Church virtual Bible study for Fridays. Right now we, we are virtual, but we're praying that we will be able to come to them in person. So whatever God allows it to be, that will be. And again, this is going to be all in English. Uh, for our English speak speaking audience and brothers and sisters um, this is all in English and the Spanish one will be coming up coming up shortly so again this is the final hour part two and uh, by your servant Pastor Abby and this we will be speaking about the rapture the great tribulation and the second coming of Christ we if this is the first time you're tuning in, I will recommend that you uh, take a pause, first of all, and subscribe to our channel and give it a one thumbs up and and like our channel so that way we will be able to, to uh, proclaim the gospel even more. And the more likes and the more views and the more subscriptions this channel gains is the more um, popular and the more visual will be on people's feed amen so again if this is the first time we are talking about the final hour a uh, part two i i will request that you pause and go back to our uh, views list of views videos and check off part one that way you will be able to see where uh where we continuing for and this is part two again uh last part one will be on november the 5th and you will be able to see from the beginning to the very end but we'll continue so we're gonna just invite the holy spirit amen uh, where we going to ask him to to just shower us with his presence and protect us with his with his um heavenly realm and shield of protection amen thank you heavenly father for allowing us to come together here tonight whether it's in person or whether it's virtually lord jesus i ask that you please open the ears and the hearts of the people that is going to listen those that are just scrolling in and uh, allow them to 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 find some kind of curiosity so they can stay and, and watch the entire video, Lord Jesus. I am also asking that you touch my lips, that you touch my heart and my mind so I will be able to continue uh, doing these Bible studies until you finally come, my Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord, also that you will remove all kinds of demonic entities that are trying to, to get involved in this in this Bible study, whether it's interfering in this side of the screen or in the other side of the screen. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you right now that you remove and shield us from any false entertainment, that you will shield us from any boresome, any sleepiness. Lord Jesus, protect the mind and the hearts of the person that is listening. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Prepare us, Lord, for what is yet to come. Amen. So, this is actually will continue. That's why I was saying uh, just try to go back to the previous one 
and so you will be able to see why we started right here so this is just an overview as you can see right here this is an overview of the book of revelations now this is this is actually a long long studies that uh, maybe another time we can dig in but what I'm gonna show here is uh, three different type of views again we are not um, saying okay we believe this way and we want you to believe this way um, no we uh, here at Freedom and Truth Church God has called us to first of all yes tell you what we believe what the Lord has laid in our hearts that that is the the truth that's why it's Freedom in Truth Church but our, our job here, what the Lord has called us to do as well, is to expose, expose and lay it out so you can choose. You get to choose what is exactly that, that you uh, just ask the Lord, amen? If you have a, have a, a certain type of belief, then just ask the Lord for wisdom. He will be able to, to lead you. He say he will not forsake you, especially if you love him and you follow him and you serve him. So we're going to lay out these three different types of beliefs. And then I will let you know what is what uh, the Lord has has uh, chosen us to believe. And back up with the Bible verses. Again, this Bible study, uh, this and all of the Bible studies that we do here is not up for discussion. So I'm not here to argue with nobody. And let's just make this clear. I'm not going to argue with nobody. If anybody trying to put a comment of arguing of all, all kinds of uh, uh, just just different ways of opinion that, that you, uh, you want to express and, and you expressing that you don't like our, our ways of belief, you know what? Uh, that's fine. You don't have to let, put no comment. Uh, if if you believe differently maybe this is not for you but all i'm saying is that ask the lord mirror everything that we're saying in here with the bible and ask the lord in prayer amen so this is just to speak a little bit very very little overview of the book of revelation and as we can see here the first box on the top is a uh, wedding of the lamb is this is going to take once we all get to heaven the wedding of the lamb and then the um, the purple bar here says heaven and then uh, as you can see if we go to the left my left hand side will be the Old Testament age this is uh, everything that already passed in the Old Testament and and then um, as you can see from the Old Testament between the Old Testament and the New Church Age, which is what we're living right now. The purple between the red and the and the blue, the Church Age, that's us right now. That's where we're living right now. And as you can see, there's a little cross in there. That's that's what happened in the uh, when Jesus was crucified, when Jesus was born and crucified. And that's what is called um, Adam to AD 33. And we'll get into the details of what Adam AD, um, just AD 33 means. But right now, the little cross means when Jesus was uh, born and crucified and resurrected. Because he is alive. Amen. He was, uh, he was and is and will be our resurrected God, resurrected Lord. Amen. So uh, we're going to be looking through, and because of time, uh, we won't be able to read the, the Revelations, but please look at it at home, Revelations 2 and 3 from the church age. And then as you can see, Adam to AD 33 is in the Old Testament, and then the church age below is Adam 33 to present. And then uh, Revelations 4.19, the tribulation part and then seven years below that because the tribulation according to the bible according to the scriptures is going to last seven years seven years period of tribulation we will get into the meat in just a second um so 
the rapture is three different points of views. As you can see, one line coming down from the rapture box to be before the tribulation, another one in the middle of tribulation, and then another one at the end of tribulation. Those are the three different views. And then the um, glorious return, that is the second coming, the second coming of Christ. So the rapture, he is not going to come for us. He is going to call us all to come to him. Amen. And that uh, you will find that in Revelation 4 through 9. And then after the glorious return of Jesus, uh, you we will find in the green column here is uh, the green cell is the millennium. And that is his reign for 1000 years. And then after that is we have Revelation 21 to 22, uh, the yellow and forward is the eternity. And eternity means that is forever. And so after, let's see, uh, right below that, um, the gray bar right here is Abraham bosom. Abraham bosom is pointing to the top. Abraham bosom was um, a portion in heaven, as far as I understood, is a portion in heaven that was there was view in the Old T Testament age. And that's when, uh, that's when the Lazarus, the, the beggar, was able to see the rich man when Lazarus died. And then the beggar died. The, be uh, the rich man, I'm sorry, yeah, the rich man died and went to hell in the red bar that you see below. And then Lazarus, when he died, the beggar, he went to Abraham's bosom. Because that's how the Bible says. It, it, it did not say it went to heaven, but it's understood that it was in a portion of heaven. So when the rich man died, he asked, he asked uh, if, I can just, if I can just have... Uh, he was able, for some reason, God just opened the... Open the the veil for the it's like a window from hell to Abraham's bosom, a portion of heaven for the rich man to be able to see Lazarus in the glorious um, uh, state of being of Lazarus. So since the rich man was burning and thirsty, he said, "Can you allow Lazarus the beggar to put his his finger in my tongue because I am burning and God said no nobody can cross from the bottom to the top neither from the top to the bottom and and that's a whole conversation and that's a whole scripture that uh, this speaks about that and I just don't want to stay too much on that because of the time but um, so right below here you can see hell and hell go also all the way from hell and then it, it has a little break, a little break between hell and the lake of fire. So great white throne is the little glimpse, is the little interruption. Because at the time for the great white throne, everybody, everybody from hell, everybody from heaven will go and will be judged by God. Those those who are found guilty obviously everybody from hell who is found guilty they will be cast into the lake of fire alone with satan and all his minions and ev all his followers and all his darkness and the lake of fire will be forever for eternity and everybody who is found clean and washed by the blood of the lamb those that have died and, and even those that are in heaven will also be judged by their actions and by the salvation that covers us all. And then God will tell us, what do you do with the time that I, that I gave you here? So anyway, that's, a, that's also a whole big topic. And I just wanted to touch different points in here just to, just to explain what you see a little bit here. But I'm going to go ahead and move on because I have other slides and I don't want to take too much time, which I already did. So, 
just to explain just a little bit, AD 33 was a common year starting on a Thursday of a Julian calendar. At the time, it was known as the Roman world as the year of um, consulship of Osella and Sula, or less frequently, year. it was the year of 786 AB Urbe Condita. The denomination AD 33 for this year has been used since the early medieval period when the Anon Domin Domini calendar era, and I will explain Anon, Anon, Anon Domini calendar, became the prevalent method in the world for naming years. So that's why that's why you see down here the Adam to AD 33, and uh, this is just the explanation taken out of the, um, basically taken out of the um, Wikipedia. You can find that real easy. So I'm going to explain why. What is AD stands for? AD stands for A. Ano, and then. D stands for Domini, is Latin for in the year of our Lord and refers to specifically to the birth of Jesus Christ. Isn't it cool? Praise God. So this is the three different, three different views, three different views of the, of the great tribulation. Amen. So in here, as we can see, Okay. Pre number one is pre -tri tribulational view. This is the people that believe that Christ will be will rapture the church before the great tribulation. Of course, we all want that to happen. We 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 really hope and pray. And there's many 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 churches and many denominations that believe and and according to them they can prove. Uh, according to the Bible that they can see that Jesus is going to rapture the church before the great tribulation and <clears throat> before the tribulation begins that is what pre-tribulation of you means number two is mid-tribulation of you Christ will rapture the church in the middle of the seven years remember we talk about the seven years seven years uh, this seven years tribulation is basically a three years and a half of tribulation. The mid-tribulation uh, viewers or, or um, I guess believers, they, they believe that Christ is going to rapture us right in the middle of the tribulation. And the third view is the post-tribulation view that Christ will return after the tribulation, that the church will endure in the tribulation. Again, many people believe one thing, many other people believe another thing. What I'm going to say to you, because the Bible says that the tribulation will be will be as never been before, and, and the Bible says that it's, it's not something that, that you should wish you will be going through, no matter how brave you are. Uh, the Bible says that it is going to be uh, basically horrible. That's what the Bible is explaining. I'm not saying you need to believe the pre-tribulation. I'm not saying you need to believe the mid-tribulation. Neither do you need to believe the post-tribulation. To me, to me personally, because I don't want to be deceived by the enemy, to me, I say, God, whenever you come, I need to be ready. Whether it's before, whether it's in the middle, or whether it's in the post, at the end of the tribulation. Of course, we all want to be raptured because we don't. We nobody likes to suffer. There's not one physical human being body that will say, Yeah, I'll suffer. I will raise my hand. I'll suffer. No, there's not one. So. Of course, we all want to go first. So, the only uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be bold and say the only downside 
of people that believe that that Jesus will take us in the pre-tribulation, in the pre-tribulation view, is the only downside is that if the Lord does take us in the mid or post, and and people believe that He's gonna take us before, and and Christ doesn't, it's it's gonna crush a lot of hearts and and a lot of a lot of people um their their love will will turn away from God and they're gonna lose their faith because they're gonna be disappointed that Jesus did not took them so I'm I'm trying to to keep an open view and I just want to say God just take me whenever you want to take me I just want to be ready I need to be ready right now because I really don't know uh, if you're gonna take me now or if you're gonna take me in the middle or if you're gonna take me later amen so I hope you understand where I'm coming from and I hope you understand the three views that I'm showing here okay I know this is very very busy uh, this is the pre-tribulation view this is just a pa uh, panorama um, that as you can see the church age rapture of the saved uh, believe that it's gonna be it's gonna be that the church of Christ is gonna be taken before the tribulation aka the judgments aka the seals the trumpets the bowls the, and that's the the bowls is which is the second half of the seven years is the battle of Ar Armageddon and as you can see again this is very busy um, uh, drawing and then the return of Christ in glory that's after the Armageddon and then the green part right here is the kingdom again I don't have time to, to go over uh, each of the things that you see another time we can talk about the seals another time we can talk about the trumpets another time we can talk about the bowls of wrath so this and the and the Armageddon and the kingdom and the kingdom is not like the Jehovah Witness uh, proclaim is actually a, a different thing um, different belief so again this is just a quick overview amen of the pre-tribulation and then this is the view of the mid-tribulation as you can see the church age the church age is in the beginning which starts after the cross that means the crucifixion the birth crucifixion and resurrection of Christ don't forget that Jesus was resurrected no matter what the devil say amen and then after that is the beginning of sorrows for 1260 days which is equals to three years and a half and then the rapture uh, which is the it's called the last trumpet that it says in first Corinthians 15 15 52 and the, the, the Lord will take us after the seven seals, after the seven trumpets, and right um, in the middle of, basically middle of the tribulation. And then after the, the Lord take, this is the view of the mid, after the Lord take his remnant, then the great tribulation will get started, which it will also last 1260 days. And then you will see, uh, according to what the Bible says in there, it, the seven cups of the wrath of God. And another time, in another study, we can talk about that. And then the second coming, the second coming of Christ after, before the millennium and after the Armageddon, as you can see it in the, in the other uh, panorama that I showed you. And then millennium and then eternity. Amen. So I'm just trying to speak faster because I have several... Uh, slides so this one right here is the post tribulation view post tribulation view is as you can see the Old Testament uh, before the cross and then the cross and then the church age and then which is equals after the cross and then the tribulation period the whole seven years three years and a half of the 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 time of the sorrows as you can see right here the beginning of sorrows and then the other three years and a half when the antichrist already been revealed and then 
right after, right after the seven years, the post-tribulationists, they believe that Jesus will come, no, that Jesus will rapture us um, right before the millennium. And then the, Arm um, then the Armageddon, and again, I cannot I'll go over all the um, different points, and this is just a, a quick view. And then, so the rapture, and then the second coming, and then the millennium for 1,000 years, and then eternity. And that is the post-tribulation view. So as you can see, the three right here, the comparison of Christian tribulation views. So the first one, rapture of believers on earth, is that the cross means that Jesus' uh, death, resurrection and then the church age and then the beginning of the uh, the tribulation right before i mean right after the the lord rapture his people that's the first view and then the second coming with church and then the millennium in the last judgment and then the the mid pre-tribulation i'm sorry the mid which is the number two uh, my pointer is not is not showing on the screen, but mid tribulation, as you can see, is that Jesus will take us right in the middle of the tribulation in the yellow in the yellow area with the arrow pointing up, and then the post tribulation is when Jesus will take us right after the tribulation, right before the millennium. So those are the three views. Amen. I I will suggest that you read your Bible. But ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom. And I think the most important is not really what you believe, the before, the middle, or the after, as long as Jesus take us. It's just as long as you are ready, as long as you have your ticket for the Lord to take you. I think that's the most important thing, that you be ready. That you be ready and not, not, not start getting ready, but be ready. Be ready before tonight. Be ready before I finish this Bible study. How you be ready? We'll talk about this in just a minute. So we'll continue with the slides. Either before, in the middle, or after. And this is what I'm talking about. Are you ready to go with him? When the time comes. Are you ready? So the tribulation warning to believers. And this is where everything, this is the most important part. Not really what you believe, not really what um, what you wish will happen, or what you think God says to you, or what your church is believing, or what your pastor is telling you to believe, or, or so many ors. No, it's are you ready? So, let's see the warnings to believers. Be on your guard. That's number one. Always, always be on your guard. Second, proclaim the gospel to all nations. Speak to everybody. Speak to everybody about God before it's too late. Three, do not worry about how to answer your accusers because you will be accused. In fact, anybody that's watching me right now and that you don't really believe in this, in this, um, in the Bible or, or what Christians are saying, they're accusing me right now. But the Lord knows everything that happened nothing goes unknown and unseen by the holy spirit and the holy spirit himself will give you the words to say in the time that you need number four you must endure to the end no matter if if the lord take us in the beginning praise god if the lord take us in the middle you must endure be faithful stay faithful stay close to god Forgive everyone and ask the Lord to forgive you. Stay faithful. Tell others about Christ to death, all the way to death. And then at the end, to be saved, those who are truly saved, they will endure. Ask the Lord to give you strength. Amen. Ask the Lord to give you strength. And then if the Lord take us in the post-tribulation, -tribula then praise the Lord. It's... it's it is going to be how God wanted to be. It's not my choice. And it's not your choice either. It's whatever God already previously uh, 
posted in the Bible, there are different views. It's like many, many eyes looking at the Bible. And sometimes they, they look at the Bible with their own desires, what I wish it was. And, and, and I, I, I understand it this way because I like to understand it this way. No, let's look at the Bible with the eyes of God and asking God, God, show me what is exactly that you are telling me. Amen. So I digress a little bit. The abomination of desolation. I'm not going to stay in this too much because of time. But Mark 13, 14. It speaks about the near fulfillment in the AD 70, which was the 786, 786. That's the AD 33. That's the era of the calendar. And when Titus decimated the Jerusalem, decimated Jerusalem, he placed an idol on the site of the altar of God. That is the, that is the, <clears throat> the abomination of desolation when something impure is placed in the temple of purity and everybody will see that is um, a warning amen so another one the far fulfillment and this when it says near fulfillment that means this already happened the 70 AD this already happened the far fulfillment is is now what is next to come when the Antichrist will sit up in the throne in a in a rebuilt temple of Jerusalem and he will declare himself to be God and the man to be worshipped now just so you know I think it was um, a couple of years when I when I saw that they was preparing to to build the temple the temple and i mean like that the way god described it in in the old testament that he wanted to be revealed this is a pro this is one of the prophecies is one of the warnings and again in another time we will we could go over um the prophecy signs and that you will see that that is one of them amen so the great tribulation that's what we're talking about matthew 24 21 the Great Tribulation will be terrible, unlike any other time in the history of the world. Jesus' warning, be on guard. You have been warned. Me talking right now is telling you, you have been warned. So the second coming of Christ, what is the second coming of Christ? I thought that the second coming of Christ was the tribulation, you might ask. Well, no, the second coming of Christ, Matthew 24, 29, after the destruction of the tribute of the tribulation the universe will go dark the stars will fall and the heaven the heavens themselves will be shaken in mark 13 26 out of the darkness and destructions the entire world will see jesus appear in the sky with great power and glory and we will be coming with him by then he were, he'd already taken us with him we will come with him in the second coming of christ and as the way my dad explained it to me and my dad god bless him uh, uh, he's he rests with the lord now uh, he explained to me that the second coming of christ is not for us or it's n it was not for necessarily the gentiles but it was mainly for the Jews, for his people. He will, because his people, uh, the Jews are waiting. They're still waiting for him. They don't think he came in the, after the Old Testament in the, in the cross. And they, they, they thought he was just a, he was just a prophet. They, they didn't think he was some, someone of uh, um, the, the Messiah that they was waiting for. In another study, we can talk about that. But the second coming of Christ is as my dad explained it to me when I was probably nine years old he said the second coming of Christ is to the Jews he's going to show them he's going to show them I already came and you did not receive me and he said look look at my hands he said look at my hands look at the holes in my hands you place those holes in those hands but since you did not receive me the Gentiles 
who accepted me, they received me and the salvation went to them. So there will be like a like a family reunion basically and they will they will see him and those that are that are still waiting for the messiah they will repent and only god knows who and who will do who and what will do what amen there's a glorious time to come amen so the second coming of christ mark 13 26 and 27 jesus will then gather the elect from every possible location in the planet and then we talk just a touch on the lesson of the fig tree Matthew 24 32 35 says the lesson just as we can predict it summer by the leaves of the fig tree so believers at the end of the age will be able to anticipate Christ's return when they witness the signs Jesus points is you can trust his word these things will come to pass and this is Jesus speaking you know Jesus no lie Jesus said this will happen and I believe him amen so the final truth mark 13 32 no one knows when he will return neither the pre-tribulationist neither the mid-tribulationist neither the post-tribulationist no one knows his return that's why he said you need to be ready now you need to be ready now a final admonition stay awake stay awake amen so the admonition means uh, first of all it's a noun and it's an act of action of admonishing it's an authoritative counsel or warning so yes take this as a warning this is a warning this is a warning praise god this is a question to consider are you ready are you ready for christ's certain and inevitable inevitable return are you ready for his rapture are you ready for his return so conclusion I'm gonna leave the conclusion up to you you think about this you take this in prayer you don't know if you're gonna wake up tomorrow you don't know because no one knows no one knows when is our final breath that's why you need to be ready while you're still breathing because after that after that is too late amen Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come together this night to be able to preach your gospel and to speak about this, my Lord God. I thank you for the people that is gathering here in this site and, and is able to listen, Lord. I just ask that you touch their hearts, whether it's through fear, through love, through passion, through curiosity, but as long as they seek you, Lord Jesus, because I know that if they seek you, my Lord, my God, they will find you. Thank you, Lord, for here tonight. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you save the people, continue saving the souls. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. And remember, this is my little announcements. So stay tuned for next week, Friday the 19th, our Thanksgiving virtual Bible study, or as we're calling it, VBS and we will have a break remember we will have a, a break with no VBS for the 26th which uh, is because it's a holiday so that Friday there will be no Bible study God bless you we love you and uh, for those for with Freedom in Truth Church we will see you on Sunday tune in at 12 in Freedom in Truth Church on Facebook Live. God bless you. And remember, be ready. Stay awake. Not walk, but awake. God bless you. Bye-bye.